Hey, welcome. We are talking about reusing assignments for Google Classroom. Now we're using the hashtag back to classroom. So if you'd like to share any of the tips from this session on social media, please use the hashtag back to classroom. We're looking specifically at reusing assignments because we know that this is one of the ways that we can save a lot of time is taking things we did last year and improving on them for this year. But Google Classroom doesn't always make it so easy. So I would like to introduce you today to the Schoolytics Content Library. So we're going to help you make this a lot easier and a lot more fun to reuse assignments from Google Classroom. And please, if you have any questions or comments, put them into the chat of whatever platform you're watching from. And I'd love to answer any questions that you have. All right, we are at backtoclassroom.org. Now you'll probably have to push enter twice if you go to backtoclassroom.org. It'll redirect you to our Facebook group where we are talking about Google Classroom. Tips for using Google Classroom and products that work really well with Google Classroom like Adobe for Education, Schoolytics, Moat, and more. Please join us at backtoclassroom.org and share your tips for Google Classroom and the tools that you like to use with Google Classroom. Okay, so let's get back to this. We are reusing assignments using the Schoolytics content library. So this is talking about Google Classroom. So this is for Google Classroom users. And you have all your assignments that you made last year or maybe even just the warm-up you did yesterday that you'd like to reuse and do again today. I actually do a daily attendance question. It's the exact same one, so every single day, I'm reusing posts on the Google Classroom assignment. So of course you have to go to the create button, choose reuse post, select the class, and then scroll to get the assignment. So, I mean, reusing assignments is great because I don't have to recreate the wheel. What's not great is the scrolling. Scroll, 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 scroll. Like, it's not such a big deal if I'm looking for the warm up that I did yesterday, but it is such a big deal if I'm looking for the assignment that I posted last year this time. So I go into the Google Classroom, I click, I'm on the Classwork tab, I click on the um, Create button and I go to Reuse Post and I select last year's class and then I got to scroll past. Now, one of my best tips really is to create at least at a bare minimum, make a new one each semester, a new Google Classroom class for this semester. But I actually prefer to do it every unit or every grading period. So I have less scrolling to do when I'm looking for assignments. As you know, you got to scroll past June, you got to scroll past May, you got, oh my gosh, you now have to try and figure out what the months are in reverse. You got to scroll past all the assignments from the end of the year to get to the ones from the beginning of the year. And it's just, let's be honest, not that fun. And you reuse one assignment and then you're like, wait, what's the next assignment? And you have to scroll, scroll, scroll again. And then by the time you finish scrolling, you're not even sure if that's the one that you wanted to reuse. So while Google Classroom is awesome, it does have a little improvement in how it reuses assignments. Now, full disclosure, I do teach high school math. And so I use these tools, but I also part-time code for Schoolytics. And so I'm really excited because these are the things I love is using data to improve student learning. So I have asked them for a job and I do some coding for them. So I want to share with you something I use and that I love is the content library in Schoolytics. We're going to go to schoolytics.com. It is free for teachers. So if you're a Google Classroom user, you can just go to schoolytics.com and have access to the content library and you can reuse assignments for free. So let me go ahead and show you how this works. I'm going to go to schoolytics.com, schoolytics.com, and I'm going to log in. And it's really great because it's just a simple login with your Google account. Now, once you log in, you're going to be shown the dashboard, which is going to give you all kinds of great information about how you're doing with your class and how your students are doing. Now, this is a sample class, so it doesn't look like I'm doing that good. Now, in the upper left corner is the three lines menu. I'm going to go to the three lines menu so that I can choose classes because I can choose up to 10 classes 
that I want to reuse. So I'm going to manage my classrooms. And here's some really fun features that are recently come into Schoolytics. You can search for your classes. You can look for archive classes or active classes. So you're looking for that class that you did last year. So I'm going to disable active. I'm going to look for an archived class. So I can see I have all these archived classes. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that one. So it's checkmarked. And I'm going to connect these. You can connect up to 10 for free. So you want to make sure you get your current class. And then you want to connect the one that you're reusing assignments from from last year. So it's going to be really important is that in schoolitics.com that you're going to the three lines menu at the top, that you're going to classes, and that when you manage classrooms, that you're selecting the class that you want to reuse assignments from. All right. What's really cool about that, though, is that unlike Google Classroom and Google Classroom, when I go to reuse post, I select a class. The next time I reuse a post, it assumes I'm going to reuse it from the same class. Okay, cool. That's nice. But what if sometimes I like to reuse it from the current class and sometimes we reuse it from last year's class and now I have to toggle back and forth. It doesn't allow me to have two. So Schoolytics will let me have up to 10 classes for free. If you want more than 10, that is part of the freemium version. You can upgrade to Teacher Pro. Okay, so now I have my classes. This one's my archived one from last year. I'm going to go to the three lines menu and I'm going to go to the dashboard. Now you'll notice under the three lines menu, it does say content library. So you can access the content library right there from the three lines menu, but you can also find it at the very bottom under resources. So on the left hand side under resources, I'm going to select content library. And notice what it's going to do is it's showing me my classes and my assignments for those classes. So these are my assignments. You can see that they're numbered with a three digit number and a hashtag. Another one of my favorite tips for using Google Classroom. But you'll notice I'm able to, yeah, I'm scrolling, but I, it's so much faster and easier for me to see all the assignments right here. So I'm able to see, okay, like not only does it give me the topic, it tells me when it was assigned and I can see the description. And I love this. You see this little tiny arrow. It's going to expand out. I guess I didn't have more. It's going to expand out and show me the full description. Google Classroom does not show me the description when I reuse posts. So I can't have me tell you how many times I'm like, oh, I think I want to reuse this assignment. And then I reuse the post and then I'm like, Ah, oh, shoot, uh, this is not the one that I wanted and I have to go all the way back and scroll, scroll, scroll again. So this way I can see the full description so I can see is this the assignment that I wanted to reuse. Also in Google Classroom, I cannot see the attachments. So I don't know if those were the right attachments or I want to update them. So you'll notice here at schoolytics.com that it is showing me these are the attachments in this assignment. And I can click on it. It's going to open it right up so I can verify that's the attachment that I wanted to use with my students. So once you have decided like, okay, I'm going to scroll down. It's getting down here into Khan Academy. There are 42,000 Khan Academy assignments that you can also post. So I have all of my assignments and I have all those Khan Academy ones, right? So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find the one that I want. And then I just click add to classroom and I can change the title. I'm like, oh man, I'm now on number 11. So I'm going to change that to number 11. And here's, I love this. I'm able to add it to any of my classes, even if it wasn't one of the 10 that I selected under the three lines menu for 10 classes. So I'm going to put this into my sample and I'm going to create a draft. Now, if you want to assign this to more than one class, this actually posts as a draft into Google Classroom. And look at this. View on Classroom is going to take me right to that assignment. It is in draft, or that class, rather. It's in draft. I'm going to see it right up here at the top. Here's that number 11, return everything. I'm going to go ahead and edit this assignment. And now I can do all of those features with Google Classroom, just like I normally would when I reuse an assignment. I can choose how many points that it's for. I can select my due date. I can choose my topic and I can assign it to more than one class. So if you want to schedule it, assign it to more than one class. Now a feature that is coming to Google Classroom is the ability to schedule to different classes at different times.
I don't think it's gone live yet. Let's check. So when I do schedule, <gasps> no, it's only going to let me schedule to, oh, wait, I didn't select multiple classes. Let's check. So I know it's coming. Oh, yeah, see, it's grayed out. So eventually it's not going to be grayed out when you select that you want to uh, schedule it to two, three, or four classes or however many you have. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. So you can choose to schedule it or you can assign it, or you can just save it as a draft. At this point, it's just a regular Google Classroom assignment. So let's go through this again. I'm going to control T. I'm going to go to schoolytics.com. I'm going to log in. And I want to go down to the content library. Hey, Waleed's here. Thanks. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate the comment. Okay. And so on this side, I'm going to be able to see, I can filter by my course. So now it's only showing me those 11 assignments and it has filtered out the Khan Academy assignments. So I scroll down. I'm going to just add this to classroom. I'm going to say which class I want to add this to. I can edit the title. So I'm like, oh, I'm on number 21 now. Create the draft. And then I can view it on classroom. So I can go ahead and edit that and make my adjustments and how many points and schedule it and all of those things that I want to do. Now, here's something that is really cool that you might be noticing right now is it says tag here on the left-hand side of the Schoolytics content library. So what I've been in the habit of doing is I add hashtags into my assignments. So I'm going to filter here by my activities. So under activities, let's go ahead. I'm going to use this little drop down arrow and you can see that I have hashtag activity and you see this it says hashtag activity right in the description. This goes in the description, not in the title. So any hashtags that activity, oh, excuse me, assignment tags, hashtag assignment tags that you put into the description of your Google Classroom assignments, you're now going to be able to filter for those in Schoolytics. Now, this is a demo class. This is not what I really do for my math class. So for my math class, I hashtag it up. So when I make an assignment, I'm doing hashtag week seven so that next year when I'm in week seven, I'm going to filter my Schoolytics content library for week seven and find just those assignments. So no more scrolling at all. I'm going to find exactly what I did this time last year. One of the things that I'm working on with the Schoolytics team is how we can just have it suggest to you the assignments you did last year. Like we know that last year you did these assignments. Uh, would you like to reassign them? So stay tuned. Hopefully that'll be a feature sometime in the near future. But for now, this is so amazing. I'm hashtagging the DOK level. I'm hashtagging the critic that is the critical thinking level. I'm hashtagging the standard. I'm hashtagging the type of assignment. So if it's a warm up, if it's group work, if it's individual, if it's a quizzes, if it, if it's assessment, if it's formative assessment. I'm, I'm just trying to be consistent about which hashtags that I use so that when I come in here into the content library, I can just really find like where all the activities that were group activities, which ones were I doing where we're having a class discussion so I can reuse those. So I'm going to be filtering for uh, things that I did week seven that were discussions and I'm going to get all of those assignments really quick. So I encourage you to start adding those hashtags into the descriptions of your Google Classroom assignments, and then you just add the classroom. This is so much faster and easier, so much faster and easier for you to reuse your assignments back into Google Classroom. Uh, whoops, says that I have something's not right. Who knows? Uh, welcome to the internet. All right, so thank you for joining me. I hope that this was really helpful on the content library in Schoolytics. And if you just go to schoolytics.com, it is free for teachers. And if you'll please join us at backtoclassroom.org and use the hashtag, hashtag backtoclassroom, where we're sharing tips on many products, including Adobe for Education, Schoolytics, Moat, and more. And of course, just good old fashioned Google Classroom tips. All right, thanks for joining and we will see you next time on Back to Classroom.